Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, it's our holiday edition. We look back at the awesome things of 2013. How right were we about those predictions? And what's coming up in 2014? We try to predict the future. Awesome Cast. This edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place. PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Awesome Cast. It's that time of the year, which, uh, the end year, year end edition, the Christmas edition. We're going to look at the year that was, look at the year that might be, all that kind of stuff. We got uh, a few people in studio. Back on the show is, and I just, I have you. None of you guys are Mad Mike. I'm sorry about that. I'll just kill that off right now. Um, we got Chilla. How you doing, sir? What's up? Not. I, I want to be not Mad Mike. Not Mad Mike. We can fix yeah, that. We can fix that. We can definitely fix that. We'll fix that in post. And there's a Christmas tree. And there's a, our tree. It's really is purple. Here. We're getting on over here. So We're festive. getting festive over here. I got this Santa hat and I got this awesome Christmas tree. We just picked this up at Walmart like two days ago. This is for the office. But I figured, uh, yes. That was yesterday. Was that yesterday? You gotta quit putting the vodka in the uh, coffee. I got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now we're all festive. Now we're really ready for the Christmas edition. Um, I think Jim Loke had one of these in his in his apartment one one year when we had them on. My gosh, so, what's that? That's beautiful, isn't it? Isn't I've it? seen ones people have at work that they're actually USB powered. Oh, I you can see plug those it into ones. your computer. It's not as big. It's not nearly as big. It's like probably six inches. Yeah, um, a couple of my friends at work have those. And the lava lamps and the. I don't know what else they uh, have. I don't know about the lava lamp. My one coworker actually I, has a strand I, of lights that just fits on the monitor that plugs into USB. You're not on the mic. You can relate that story. Oh, you, what was it? A, it's a string of Christmas string of lights, Christmas that lights that's on, on the a USB monitor. or that's on the monitor. If it plugs into the computer. Would you need to look into some of those? It's probably on like ThinkGeek or something like that. Probably. So they have Iron Man arc reactor coasters. I'm I'm getting them. Of course. They light up. It's the arc reactor. You can put your beer on it or your mixed drink. Awesome. Also, on, good. also on the couch with us in studio, back in studio, Mike Munns. What's up? What's up? How you doing, sir? Loving life. Ready for the holidays. I threw up my Festivus pool early this year. Oh, yeah? Oh, uh, yeah. There, there will be airing of the grievances and feats of strength to be had. I think we already had some of those at the Inns Bowl a couple weeks ago. <sighs> for sure. Our, our battle at the, at the, at the yard battle line. Royale. Yeah. It was a very, very, very brutal. Barbaric. Loved it. Also joining us via Hangout is Cynthia Klosky. How you doing? Hello, I'm fine. Excellent. So, um, again, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check us out. I'm sorry there's movement over here. I'm throwing off. Sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, we're at Awesome Cast on the Twitters. Uh, as well, we're on uh, Facebook and Google+. Plus. We have a lot of conversation there. We're getting a tree plugged in here. We're going to do this right this episode. This is the first one of the of the night, so we're just getting started. And as we go, we need to build up to the lighting. We'll build of it up too. to the lighting, and then and then and then there'll be some drinking in the mayhem show. I don't know what they have planned for the video game show, so we'll see what happens there. So my lovely assistant is going to take care of this. That's a really short cord they gave you on that, isn't it? There we go. Boom. Now we're all lit. Here, that was a little easier than stringing the lights out again. Although I think they're still around from last year. Um, so uh, usually for the Christmas, <laughs> for the for this episode, we like to look back on the year that was. We like to look at the predictions. We like to see how close we were uh, last year with predictions. Uh, so let's get right into it and let's see our awesome thing of the year. Uh, who wants to go first on this one? Okay, uh. you're not on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Chilla, what do you got? I'm, I'm going to go with Chromecast. Okay. Uh, you know, the, they, they did release an update today, um, so they're supporting more and more apps. I think the Chromecast could could well overtake the Rokus and everything. Uh, the price point is perfect. Um, I think if they got a couple extra pieces, um, no, Windows Phone was not the thing of the year. Um, that was something <laughs> out of the the uh, the chat. Um 
but I, I just really see it being a good device. The, the capabilities are there. It's small. It's it's portable. I, I look at it as I could take it into a conference room mm-hmm. and throw it, throw it into pretty much anything with an HDMI and a little bit of power. I, um, today they they added a bunch of apps, so you're up to Netflix, HBO to go, Hulu Plus, Pandora, YouTube, Google Play TV, movies, Google Play Music, Vivo, Red Bull TV, Songs, of which I actually really enjoy, Plex, which to me is huge because now you can get your local video really, library. That really opens it up. Yeah. Post TV, Vicky, which I don't know, Discover Korean dramas, Japanese anime. It's not necessarily something I'm interested in, but maybe you are. But there's and a the variety. real player cloud. Yeah, it's, yeah, there's... it is a definite variety. And I think when you, I think by them doing Plex, it's really going to increase the capability of taking your home media and your streaming media, because I think Plex started a thing where they're kind of like Roku now, where they'll serve you up additional content. You just kind of have to link it in. So, for instance, I think on Plex, you could have it read like a podcast RSS feed, so you could hook it up to uh, AwesomeCast, and it would show up in your Plex nice. info. So, I don't know. I think it's... I'm, I'm sold. This will be my next uh, home media device. It, it definitely feels like it's at that like early Roku level of a variety of stuff. Mm-hmm. You can't say, well, there's nothing for this. Because it used to be like, well, you can do YouTube and Netflix. You know, for like a month, month and a mm-hmm. half, I think. Like, that was it, right? And it was like, oh, we got Hulu Plus, and there was great fanfare, and there was HBO Go a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, Mons, you're using this for, uh, for, I know you're using the desktop thing a lot. I am too. There's interesting, I mean, we tried to find it earlier was the uh, beta link out to do the screen share mm-hmm. or the screencast. And it's pretty interesting that I, we weren't able really to find it here on, on uh, Chilla's laptop, but I know I have it on mine and that's what we use to watch hockey games a lot when we're streaming from my laptop. Mm-hmm. One of the issues you get with it, unfortunately, is when you share out the screen like that, you lose the audio. So you have to have some way to connect your laptop or whatever device you're streaming from audio-wise to some kind of a sound mm-hmm, unit. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you lose that little bit, but it's it, it's able to be complemented and made up. It does. It, it well, even And I've been using the in-tab kind of sharing part. And, and it really works well for sites like, you know, if you're looking at Daily Motion or some other site or Revision 3 previously that, you know, maybe wasn't on that before the video even you just hit full screen it picks up the full screen now i don't think it did originally when they first put it out mm-hmm. um but it works fine you know for for anything like that um I, i've been loving i find myself when i have like you know the the occasional day when i have no agenda just sit, flip through on my laptop adding videos to a youtube queue like because you can just add to a tv queue and just like going through them you know having three five minute videos and just just you know, catching them on stuff. You know, Muppets are on YouTube. You know, I'm going to watch that kind of stuff. Some of the, again, some of the tech stuff, some of the source fed stuff that I'm into, some of the wrestling stuff. They put full matches on WWE on YouTube. You know, like old stuff, like from like pay per views, like <clears throat> Rock and Stone Cold, their first like Intercontinental belt, you know, from like 90, I don't know, six, you know, and I, and I had, I'd never seen it. Like, That's fantastic. You know, it's just like, it's just like pulling it from Netflix at that point, you know. So. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I'm really loving the Chromecast. Loving the Chromecast. Um, playing with the idea of like, got my grandfather a Chromebook and and realized you know kind of show him like you know he has got a couple TVs through the through the through the you know his room or through his his house and, and I hooked up one of them to HDMI because it's a little 11 inch and maybe he's going to have a little bit of trouble reading and some of those those things but he loved the idea when I plugged it into his 50 inch TV right um, and and I was like well if you get those little Chromecasts you know you can just plug it into these and just share to whatever your room you're in, you know, and now you just have a big secondary monitor and it'd be really good for you, you know? So, you know, playing with those kinds of ideas. So, and then there's the presentation aspect too. Yeah. So what I thought was nice about it is I took an, I took an old tablet and just took the, the YouTubes, the Netflix, everything that it was already supporting. And then I, I added stuff like the X, the Xfinity from Comcast that I have and some of their online stuff. And like you said, bringing out old videos and even with the ability to share your screen out with it that I was able to use, it really turned my tablet into a total media device, mm-hmm. which was nice because I could switch, control my television, control my video, and just do it all through one. And that's kind of where I'm trying to get it all in one pile, so to say. Yeah, yeah. it's um, And, and I noticed that they definitely updated. I heard there was going to be an update here over the weekend. I, I got it today along with this announcement. Uh, so I think they opened up the SDK with this today. Okay. Just like when, like a few weeks ago, when Glass opened up their SDK, uh, it, you know, that's when just like the flood of everything it, came down in. Does it still require their approval, do you know? Because at first, the 
you could use the Chromecast information, like you could put whatever lines of code you needed to put in your app. But you also, there was something on the Google backend that they had to kind of approve you. Sure. And flip, it's still there. It's still there. So they yeah. still have to approve your app to be able to So they to just like opened cast. up the floodgates of approvals today, mm -hmm. I guess. You well, know? yeah. When, if you remember, when the big thing about the Chromecast when it first came out and versus rooting it and taking control of it yourself was as soon as, I think it was a month after they released it, they released a patch that covered the hole that you were able to root it. So they mm -hmm. immediately kind of shot themselves in the open source foot, but then they kind of are reopening it more in a controlled way. Oops, sorry. So I, I, I definitely, I, I don't think we're going to lose that level of approval from google anytime soon uh cindy have you been following the chromecast stuff did that did you happen to pick up one of these uh no you know i um i learned about it today <laughs> from looking at the at what uh, was on the spreadsheet um and i'm immediately fascinated by it because i'm way behind uh the times as far as like hooking up an entertainment center of any kind i like only two weeks ago bought a blu-ray player so, but it has on it, you know, all the Netflix and things. And so I've been just, you know, sort of thrilled at being able to see things on a big screen. And now, you know, $35 and I can have pretty much anything. And so, although I, I guess, and, and this feeds into my um, thing of the year, because again, I'm way behind. Um, I've been um, streaming things from other countries, uh, which is, I know, illegal, through Tunnel Bear, which is my favorite thing can of we, the year. Can we say questionable, you know? <laughs> It's pretty much not legal, but oh, okay. um, if they would let me pay for it, I would, mm -hmm. but they won't. But so Tunnel Bear, um, which I love, and I wish that, I wonder, it's because it says Chromecast does not work in other countries, but I'm going to get one and try it anyway. See if you can just sort of sneak through and, and throw that stuff up on the screen too. It'd be kind of fun to watch. Well, I think I think I did see an article about you can use Chromecast as long as, if you're, I'm presuming you're using this Tunnel Bear to... Uh, view stuff through your browser, right? Mm -hmm. If that's the case, anything coming into your browser, because yeah. uh, the Chromecast works over your Wi-Fi, so it's going to mm -hmm. send just whatever comes to your browser via your laptop, your computer, out yes, to the no, TV. because it says that it does not work, for example, with Amazon, um, Amazon's Prime Video stuff. Okay. Yeah, but you know what? Even even if you can stream it on your computer screen, you can stream it on your Chromecast using the screen sh the screen sh uh, share button. Yeah, so they then you have to leave say that they device can't do it with the Amazon Prime Video, though. Interesting. So it's still going to play on so this maybe device. So they, maybe yeah. they have a block on it. So It has yeah. something to do with Silverlight. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I refuse to install Silverlight. I, I, re yep. I reformatted my laptop, and it, it's like, oh, you need to do this. Because I'm like, want to pull up Netflix and say, oh, maybe I'll just do the control of Netflix from, from my laptop here because my phone died or something, right? And it says, uh, I'll install several layers. Like, well, now nah, I've watched something else. Yeah. You know, it's it, like, just, I just don't want to bother with it. It's not that, like, Silverlight has, was never a problem other than, other than it's just one more thing that's annoying to install. Yes. You know, I'm spoiled by Chrome just having Flash. Yes. And quietly updating Flash in the background. And I hate every time I go to Safari and I have to update Flash. Mm -hmm. What's Safari? Well, now I think isn't Flash doing something now on the on the Maverick side where they're in a container now and they can I think they are, they but allow I still it. have to install it through that stupid thing where I have to shut down all my browsers and I have ten tabs open. Yeah, and, okay. And That's I don't want to like start over from whatever I had lined up to do. You know. Yeah. Uh, like it kills my workflow, and it's just it's just super super annoying. I, I wish like the rest of them could catch up. I wish people get rid would get rid of Flash. How's That'd that? be nice too. <laughs> That'd also be wow. nice. Can we, can we already pronounce, please kill Flash in 2014? Flash and Silverlight, go away. <laughs> so are we changing the show from predictions to please? <laughs> please? You know, I actually consider, I consider it later for the Wrestling Mayhem show to have a Please Santa segment. Um, and I think we need to have one here on this show. So maybe we'll, we'll stick that in here if we have time. Um, all right. Uh, so Tunnel Bear. Um, is this, so is this like, like I've used uh, some stuff like Foxy Proxy in the, in the, in the, in the, past is this kind of along that line yeah it's a it's like a dead simple proxy server vpn type thing that okay. lets you appear to be in any of a couple of different countries and it's um there's a free level that lets you download a certain amount of uh, bandwidth and then the paid level is eight dollars a month 7.99 a month something like that which is like unlimited bandwidth okay so 
it's delightful. And it's, I mean, it's, I, 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 you know, I purport to be a sort of geeky techie person, but I could have never, never been able to set up a proxy server to save my life. No. Uh, they install this thing. You, you literally flip a switch and it's, you're as though you're in England, for example. Yeah, even the thing that I had, um, like you had to go find a server. Right. You had to go find like something that you could tunnel through. Um, but, but again, they didn't, I don't think they had any paid options. It was like kind of an open source kind of thing. And I had to use fire. And it looks like Tunnel Bear right now is fifty percent off. And if you pay for for a year in advance, you can get it for a mere fifty dollars for the entire year. They have Android, PC, and iPad apps and if available. It, yep. Mm-hmm. And now I find this interesting. So, and I don't want you to have to divulge what is, is that we are using it for. So you can mimic being in another country. So then you can get there. It's specifically for the BBC iPlayer. Okay. Okay. That's what I I figured. Um. So I will see Sherlock on January 1st, <laughs> January 19th. Oh, and it, it, I'm definitely going to look at that and, uh, and, and see if uh, that does start working with the Chromecast here, because I, I kind of want to watch that too. I hate mm-hmm. having to wait for the PBS cut down version. Although last time they came out, I think we ended up watching them on the PBS app. But there's always that, like, there's like a two-week window where you can do that. And, okay. and it's hard to say, okay, we need to watch this now. That's why we pay for Hulu and, and stuff like that. So we don't have to worry about the window. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, Missy just caught up on the entire, this past season of Glee, like last week, you know, and mm-hmm. I know, I know, I know. Their Christmas episode was horrible. Was it? <laughs> Please, Santa, bring me a new Glee Christmas episode. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Sound of music instead. Yeah. Um... I'll go next here. Um, so, so mine, um, I put here Google Glass, but I want to say generally wearables were kind of the awesome thing. Uh, although you're having kind of a bad time with well, the Pebble Watch has been pretty cool for you, children. Pebble right? Watch is awesome. Just don't let it go dead. Like as far <laughs> as batteries go, because I, I'm I, I I have no clue what happens when when the device screen goes blank. How long you have till the battery is truly truly dead? I'm guessing it's a day or two. I was out of town and and left left it here um and when i got back it was dead and and getting that thing back to life was it was a pain in the butt and i I do understand why now if you go through some of their frequently asked questions people are like my battery died and now my device is dead it's it's probably not dead and if you keep playing with it and, and and messing you'll 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 figure it out and they do have some frequently asked questions on the topic mm-hmm. but it doesn't definitely deter me. It definitely doesn't deter me from not using it. Now I'm just more mindful of, hey, I should probably make sure I plug it in on occasion. I'm still getting about seven days of battery life, so that's good. Um, there's a lot more apps coming out that I've been kind of leveraging. I can remote control my camera, more interface with the internet. I'm not reading Twitter feeds or anything on it. It's It, it doesn't necessarily lean itself to that, but there's some cool... Some cool stuff where you can now I can get the weather on it, where I don't have to ever open up the weather and, and on my phone stuff like that. So um, I'm impressed with with wearables in general. Um, it was a, it was a clo- that's a clo- that that was neck and neck with the Chromecast for me. Yeah, for for yeah. awesome thing of the year. Well, I think I think like the entire trend I think is is awesome. Like not just you know Google Glass. Google Glass has its, its problems, and I think it's just now getting to a point where uh, it's more of a you know hey I can actually show people this and they have a lot to do. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think I talked about before, uh, you know, the family got to play with it and play with the word game. I got, I got more than, well, you can see notifications, da, 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 but you have to go dig in for that cool demo of the team mm-hmm. before. Um, but now it's like, here, do this or, or here, uh, you know, try to translate the Spanish or something, you know, there, there's something more visual so that they, they can get into and they, they, they kind of see more, of kind of the potential of the thing. Uh, uh, Google Music just got added to it, so now I'm really kind of uh, uh, really want that that swap unit to come in so I can get the one with the headphones. Uh, because you know, again, it's nice. All my music's up there in the cloud with Google Music. I, I'm I just put up when you came in actually, each other. I was actually playing with uh, bringing up my own album on there because I have okay. it up in the Google Music Cloud um and stuff like that and see what's like the you know just you know, walk around have this and i don't have something dangling down to my phone you know um you know and and but it's a lot of the same stuff you have pebble I, i've seen a lot of other people with pebble and and that idea that you don't pull your phone out as much right um you know I, I've, I've said multiple times you know that you know we've kind of you know now this stays in the pocket more 
and we can you know go check that maybe respond to it depending on the device we're on if it's something I can respond to via voice on here or something uh, and then you kind of move on or at least you know okay that okay good good now I know I'll do that versus maybe I'll just let it go in my pocket you know mm -hmm. let it buzz in my pocket and I, I'm not gonna deal with that right now you know I know for me when I don't have these on um, there are big gaps where I'm not paying attention to Twitter they're like oh did you see that tweet today you know I love you know, not everybody can be on Twitter all the time um, but you know I'm emails and Twitter both it just you know it feels like I'm more connected with that throughout the day I love having these during the work day definitely mm -hmm. so um, but yeah, I, and I think I think that's going to continue. We're going to see. Um, I know, you know, Chachi's been saying, you know, he wants to get a watch. And I keep saying, like, wait for Google to do one. Wait for Apple to do one. Because uh, while the Pebble, Pebble's nice, I still think I think like that problem you're having, you never would have seen that from seen that from Apple. I don't think I don't think you'd see it Google. from Google. No, um, I, I'd, I'll be interested to see if Samsung keeps up with theirs and if they can make it work with other devices other than the Samsung devices. I think it was a little short-sighted for them to, to just do it with a, a handful of the Samsung devices, not even all of them. Yeah, that was... Um, there's, a, I think, Qualcomm, or somebody came out with another one that I think it's the TOK, T-A-K or T-O-K, or Q. T -O -K. Shadow's got one that's of somebody I haven't heard of that isn't mainstream, too. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think there's a lot there. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out and, and how much... How much adoption it gets? I think I think adoption is going to be key, and I think the one thing that really pushed it forward, even for Pebble, was you now have places like Best Buy carrying something that was a Kickstarter. It's it's not mm -hmm. just this vapor concept that may or may not be released one day. Uh, Frank's saying the the Qualcomm Toke. Yeah, that's it. So what's that? That's another smartwatch that okay. was released. Um, I think I think you, I remember you guys talking about this like before before they were. Yeah, so I, so I think it'll I think it'll be something that it, keep your finger on that pulse and and see what, what's uh. Was it talk? Is that how we pronounce it? I guess. One of these. Yeah. It's an expensive one though. I think Is it's it? like four hundred bucks or something. Well, it's got a nice screen on it too. Three fifty. So they probably just like pushed it. <laughs> And the, I, I'm, I'd be interested to see what the battery life on that, because I think one of the things they were saying about that one is the the watch face is always on. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think the Samsung one may go to sleep after a while. I think there's, with that full, it's probably um, LED or OLED, um, but it, it's on always on display. So you could you could run into the, the you're going to get eight hours or maybe ten hours of battery life on that. See, that's not a light up? Is it a light up screen? That no, it lights up and it's I think it's full color. It's not like the it's not e ink like mm -hmm. the Pebble is. Mm -hmm. Um the Pebble is just simple e ink. Mine'll light up, but there's no it's not really graphically intense. It's a Kindle. Yeah. It's the old school Kindle. It's the Kindle of the watch. I, I honestly think that's gonna be when it comes to those, mm -hmm. I think that's gonna be the ones that take off first because just well, it's I, gonna be easier, I, and it'll be interesting too to see what they do as far as getting yep. app developers. So, so let's take it back to the Chromecast or or, or um, Glass. If you can't get developers on board to develop for your platform, and you don't have an SDK available, you're you're gonna be stuck. Mm -hmm. um, especially when all these other companies are gonna allow it, and then I mean the sky's the limit. Then people people will come up with cool ideas versus the, the manufacturer having to come up with a cool idea. I mean, I think I already have like eight apps on my iPhone for my, that interact with my Pebble. Mm -hmm. So, and, and one of them is from Pebble. So I, I think it's going to be also dependent on, can you get developers behind it and who's, who's, and where can you get, who can you get to carry it? Munz, do you have anything? Looking back, Look. although I think this year, looking back, I really had a lot of fun with drones this year. Yeah, I uh, I really got off on a, a little kick where I purchased one from an entry level and then took it pretty extreme. And uh, for me, that was pretty cool this year. Taking taking control of the air, air and really trying to, to push the limits about what was legal. And it's kind of funny because there isn't a real lot of laws established to what you can do with the drone. It's kind of a new thing, right? Well, I mean, they started off. With, I started off with a real simple one, the Parrot AR. It's sold at Radio Shack. There's an iPhone app for it. There's an Android app for it. You can actually fly the the drone with your phone. 
So, I mean, I started off with something that was kind of cool and interactive and uh, wanted to, to tie it to something I didn't have to spend a lot of money to do. I think they ran for like $300. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm seeing here on Amazon. Trying to pull the picture. Yeah, the Parrot AR was definitely a pretty cool one to start off with. And if you have an iPhone, there's an app that comes. You can just control it, literally steering it with your iPhone, flying it around. It's, it's pretty neat. Um, there's a couple other ones <laughs> that uh, Android had that did the same thing. I mean, we didn't do can that. Can you shoot at it? Occasionally, <laughs> things got tough. Does it pop smoke? When we made this commercial, we had a fog machine that we borrowed from Zach Tanner. No, it's a pretty cool little device. It's a quadcopter, four propellers. It flies around at decent speed. Battery life isn't that bad. It's fun to start you off with. But, it, you know, it's kind of like a remote control car that you buy out of the box. It's only going to have so many limits. So then I took it to the next level. Um, I went to a website called DIY Drones, and they kind of address not just a, a copter drone. They address boats as well as plane drones. And uh, the one I, I pursued with them was called an Ardu Copter, A-R-D-U Copter. And they started off with four propellers, probably around $1,000 and went up. And at this point, I'm maneuvering an eight-propeller device around for multiple things. I mean, I wanted to, one of the things I know Sorg and I joke about is we wanted to put the Google Glass on there and fly around and see how that would look. A lot of these helicopters and, and the uh, the paracopter actually comes built on well, with a built-on camera. So, I mean, you can actually stream the, the camera that it's shooting when you're flying it on your iPhone while you're flying it to see what's going on. It's pretty cool. But I, I was looking to do some practical uses, you know, maybe bridge inspections, maybe some uh, weaponizing of them. It'd be cool for uh, videotaping in team stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, this one, they're they're videotaping like rhinoceroses and, and elephants and stuff. That's uh, and lions. Holy crap. Uh. <laughs> I mean, drone technology, we all heard Amazon blow their steam about it the other day. And, you know, that really started a big buzz about it. But it. It's, it's a real thing, and it's real. It's very cheap to get involved in and, and to get started in it. And I think that's where, you know, uh, Chilla brings up where the developers are going to take off with the, the wearables and, and, you know, the, the watches. I think the same thing is going to start to happen as we develop different medias. You know, a, a drone, what else can we do with it? How many people are going to have an idea about some different way to add technology to it to make our lives better? And that's why... I was super excited about drones last year. What's the what's like the diff average distance you can get on it? So if you're remote controlling it from like your iPhone, uh, like the, battery you... strength becomes the issue. So okay. if everything's fully juiced, you've got about twenty minutes, hundred feet. Okay. Up hundred feet, out left, right. Figure you can do it within a hundred feet. Okay. Then you lose signal strength and whatnot if you start getting too much further than that. And a lot of those, a lot of the drones have a, a kill switch involved. Or it's not like it's just going to fall out of the air, but it's actually going to pause if it starts to lose radio strength, if it starts to lose battery strength. And then the, the more expensive you get with them now, some of the ones I have, um, the real nice one I bought, the Octocopter, is autonomous. It's got a built-in autopilot. I can set in coordinates. It'll fly to and from. It can carry 30 pounds. So, I mean, there's some options there that you're able to do with it. Pretty cool technology. They're definitely, definitely going to be right around our corner. Yeah. It's only a matter of time, right? I mean, we, 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 you know, well, first thing I thought of when they, they announced the, the the Amazon drones was like the issues you had, and I'm like, well, these guys are going to have way higher end ones than we're thinking about, and we got to think it's going to be five years from now in technology, yes. not now. I mean, look at this kind of stuff in comparison to five years ago. I mean, this is you know, it, it's it's going to be ten times better, and and this is going to be a thing because now now this is popularized now there's so many people trying things with it you're doing your experiments you're going to have you know whoever else this is more functional and interesting than a, than a, than a rc helicopter that people are already using for years yep. um so what you know what's going to happen you're going to sky's the limit it, it is i mean you're going to have people like having these scale buildings in in the city and looking at people's windows and stuff well i think a lot of what you, where you're starting to go with that is that where the problem lies right now is that there is no kind of laws or restrictions or any kind of anything to control what you're allowed to do and not to do i know i'm obviously not allowed to fly it around any kind of buildings downtown or around any uh, city buildings or anything like that i definitely would get yelled at by police but I was at Station Square. I flew it out into the middle of the river. Mm -hmm. And there was no questions. Nobody said anything. I mean, there was people looking on and saying, oh, my God, look, he's flying the drone out there. That's so cool. But at the same time, and you, and you we don't know what's funny. The last place I saw a drone being used, when the duck came, there was a group of kids using a drone to videotape the duck's entrance. I thought that was a very crafty use of the drone. And theirs, too, fell into the river. 
but nonetheless, <laughs> it was a great effort. Now, so, does it fall into the river because it runs out of batteries or because it hits a distance? Both. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes, I don't know why theirs did, but the mine actually ran out of batteries and began to land itself, which is exactly what it was supposed to do. And it, it, it dropped an elevation from wherever it was down to three to four to five feet, and then suddenly into the water. And I think maybe moving on, I might want to actually develop some kind of a flotation device that can save it. Like once it gets down to one feet and, you know, one foot, is there a way for it to detect water with an infrared that it just blows up a little, like a, a, a lifesaver down under something, you know? Mm -hmm. is, is, are there waterproof additions of these? Not that are, are cheap. I'm sure yeah. people have taken yeah. out and customized them. That's At this point, it's a hobby for mm -hmm. a lot of people. And a lot of people that stray from the model airplane community are crossing over into this drone community because you see the ones on television, they're developed after small planes. Mm -hmm. So they actually sell similar types of those on the website I was saying. On DIY drones, it'll give you the largest breadth you can imagine of what drones are available and they are all available to the public. There's no kind of red flags that go up. There will be this, the, 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 uh, other than Amazon pushing it, it's going to be until somebody does do something, you know, Some off judge's with daughter it. gets yeah. spied on, <laughs> exactly. and that's how this stuff happens. Yep, yep. So, so hopefully, you know, things like maybe Amazon and I guess UPS is also working on something. There's a few other organizations that said, hey, yeah, we are looking at drones. But I feel like it's like, like how everybody said, yeah, we're making a watch too. When everybody started talking about it, right? Gecko just did a commercial with a drone delivering a uh, a sandwich to somebody in a gecko in a gecko plaza. There was a there was a thing where Domino's said we're going to use drones yep. to, you know, to deliver pizza. You know, you might get your pizza quicker. But hey, you know, we <laughs> might have gotten our pizza tonight. We didn't get our pizza from. If it Papa was a drone, it would have been here. Exactly. There you go. I mean, it was, would have mattered when when everybody was busy and ordered pizza at the same time as mine was scheduled. Uh, but hey, you know what? The Pizza Tuesday rush was on. You know what? We were thinking about a pizza sponsor for next year for these podcasts, and now uh, that's Papa John's is not one that's going to be it. So you know, I think for a pizza delivery, it's almost like you want not a drone but a automated one of those automatic cars because then it could actually have like the oven and everything in the vehicle mm -hmm. whereas a drone needs to be lightweight but if it could just drive itself to your door and then you know serve Keep it, it up somehow. I think that's what Jimmy John's does with their hoagies they make them on the bikes <laughs> they're so fast <laughs> it's inhuman who downtown have you ordered from them well, I, we it do takes all the time. me longer to get from my first floor to my office on a 33rd floor than it does for me to get a Jimmy John's hoagie it, made, it took him seven minutes to get to my office. That's ridiculous. From the time I called, we timed him, to the time he was standing in the foyer of the office, it was seven minutes. Oh, you didn't use the app? Uh, we I, use the app all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I call sometimes, too. And so it, it just was so fast. It blew me away. I, I was just amazed. Seven minutes. And they're, um, they're what, probably like four blocks away, right? And I don't get one that's canned, like they, that they can have ready-made. I get something that is a little bit different than one of their, their sandwiches <laughs> that they have. So I know that... It's amazing. I've never seen them pull something that was like off the shelf. I've never seen a pre-made sandwich. In no, there. no, I know. Anytime so. I go in there, because I, you know, I don't go to Jimmy John's a lot, so I just pick one and say, mm. "Hey, give me that one," and it's all fresh. Yeah, so fast, freaky fast, freaky fast. It is freaky, freaky fast. fast. <laughs> all right, um, and Chilla, it, it, was this you put this in here? The glass controlled home appliances? Yes. Yes, this, I, I did. didn't know what category this is going into tonight. I uh, yes, question mark news, question mark. That, yes. that would be the appropriate <laughs> appropriate uh, I was I was kinda of trying to tie in back in with your with your wearables and an awesome thing of the year. This is just an article. There's there's some people working on glass and an app and an actual piece of hardware. I think it's an infrared repeater. And they're actually controlling home appliances with, with glass. So I think it's a cool concept. I'm into the home automation side of side of things. So, Jervis. I think this is where I I think I think this is our future. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to be controlling appliances and objects and other things, drones with 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 a wearable technology. Because think about it, you can control your drone from your watch. Yeah, that would be awesome. And and you get the video up there. I, I don't know. I just could it's, see it. it. That's not far away at all. It's that like happens. straight from a Dick Tracy cartoon. <laughs> exactly. You know what I, mean? I need milk. Fly down to the store and get me milk. And there it would be gone. You combine that with Google Now. An okay drone. An okay drone. Okay, okay, okay drone. 
<laughs> well, now Google wants to get into the to the actual robot Android market. I like, think physical. they've been there for a while. Oh yeah, but I mean, it's, it. oh. yeah, that's the thing. The guy that that worked on Android mm-hmm. is actually working on Androids now. Yeah. Maybe that's what's in the barge. It's just a fleet of Androids, like iRobot. Oh my god! <laughs> like we just figured it out, like Skynet. They've been building them in that damn barge. They're all liquid metal. Uh, we have on the line, let me see if his audio is up here. Uh, Frank Chinoweth returns to us. How you doing, sir? At Fuzzwad. Oh, let me get your audio up. We're cooking dinner, so. Okay. Um, well, hey, well, since I got you on the line here, do you have an awesome thing of the year you'd like to share with us? Um, his accordion. His accordion. We got some great oh, picks God. with that accordion after Pod Camp, by the way. I almost died. <laughs> after Pod Camp. You did. You did almost die after Pod Camp. almost die. That's right. Um, I'd, I'd say probably the awesome thing of the year is but Chromecast. Mm-hmm. Do you see how the hand is touching his shoulder? Yeah, yeah I think that's going to be something that's going to make a big shift for a lot of stuff in the future. Oh, by the way, they're commenting on the couch here. We love how in your shot it looks like you're being tapped on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, it worked out pretty well. Yeah. There you go. I'm so much better before. Wait, if you move your head over, it'll look like he's uh, you're getting your ear poked. Yeah, he's <laughs> <ducked out> a <laughs> little bit. getting a wet willy there. Um, yeah, we were actually talking a little bit about the Chromecast before. Have you have you ventured in the Chromecast area yet? Uh, I have one. I'm getting a second one for Christmas. <laughs> um, the frustrating thing is the fact that it still won't let you play local files. That needs to change. It, Plex, it, you it, can now do Plex. Plex. Uh, well, yeah, we talked about it as earlier. of today. You can do Plex and um, plus the beta streaming of the of your screen. You can still do but it, but you have to leave the screen running then. That's my problem with streaming the screen. Mm-hmm. Like you can now, like with Plex, you would be able to set it and it can shut run your device. Our computer sitting yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, like I don't want to have to leave the screen running. Yeah, well, we get the baby steps. I want full blown sprint. It's only it's 2013. Up. We got time. Yeah, like a few days left. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Anything else uh, stick out for you? Um. What uh, Motorola did with Moto X with all the voice control stuff is pretty big, too. I mm-hmm. think that's going to be a big trend for next year. This was a pretty big year for that fight between Google Now and, and Siri, right? So, the, And I think uh, one of the big major um, bloggers or reporters slash stock people today in USA Today actually covered it, that uh, Siri and Google are now neck and neck. Yeah. And I didn't realize this. Last year at this time, Google could only answer like 33% of questions. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now it's it's like into the high 70s, low 80s. They said and, it was like 75%. Yeah, right actually, actually did. I was yeah, I, I saw this on CBS News before I got on the show tonight of mm-hmm. all places I was flipping through. The interesting thing is, and they actually, in one of the articles, they actually broke it down by whose service each company is using to find the answers. And one of the things that surprised me too was Siri is still better at understanding an actual command, like turn Bluetooth off, which is a newer thing for her yeah. to be able to even do. But Or like call so-and-so. Like Google, I guess, used because they're such a search company, didn't always understand that you wanted the device to actually do something. Yeah. They, they were I've, more... I've had a bunch of times where I try to, uh, I'll tell it, navigate to work. And then it'll do a Google search for navigating the internet while at work. <laughs> and so. it comes up all the time. It's like, well, that, that's great. I'm not lost in West Virginia or anything. Trying to find my way <laughs> well, that's like, home. that's like when they, when they, you know, when, when glass, when I got back in July, their big push was most of the power of what it does is by using Google. You ask it questions, mm-hmm. you know, and that was that was it for the you know the voice commands. It activates certain functions, but it's um, hey Google, can you tell me what this is? Hey Google, what's the weather? Hey Google, this, you know. Hey Google, when's the Steelers game? You know, it, there's no actual, you know. I mean, there I, well, there is like take a picture, some very rudimentary things on here, and then and then that's about it. But it's very very explicit, you know. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know, I I pick this thing. I'm not sure what what all the voice does. You know, so now, you know, it, it, the same thing, well, there's a little helper screen on, on Siri now uh, that does give you some suggestions. And I think that really helps people learn because they're like, okay, what do I do with this? You know, I keep, you know, trying to learn 
new tricks and new ways to streamline. Like I tell it, hey, remind me to do this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that now I know it will actually like set an alarm for me I instead think, of just a little notification that I'll forget about because it's in, it's, it's in with all the Twitter notifications. The thing that I really like is the remind me when I get somewhere. So I can, because I have... In my in my personal contact, so you have to tell Siri which contact's your contact, and then you yeah. have to set up your contact with a bunch of additional information. But my contact has my work address, it has my home address, it has all those pieces. So I can say, remind me when I get to work, or when I'm leaving work. So like once I get out of the proximity of the building, it'll remind. It'll, so I can I'll be like, so so wait, so I can be like, let me try this. So I can say, when I leave home, remind me to pick up hot dogs. Which home address for Michael Sorg? There's one with a period. <laughs> just hit that one. Here's your reminder for when you leave home. I'm so now when your phone gets out of a certain proximity or your house, yeah. you're going to get a notification pop up. Will and Google do that? I don't I, Can it do... Does it understand... It knows who you. I think it. I think it will because it knows who you are based on the fact that it's your it has Google all the account. information. Yeah. It's Google. Let's see what it does. Uh, remind me to pick up milk when I leave home. Let's see what it does. Uh, when, where? Oh, there's two selections: when and where. And then it actually does pull up home, so I do have to set that. Um, and I guess I press this remind me. Saving reminder. So I'm going to take both of these devices when I go out for lunch tomorrow, and see, and what, see which and we'll see, see what happens, and see which one yells at me. <laughs> you know, um, until they start. I'm showing. not sure. If, uh, I'm not sure if Google has where to remind you whenever you leave somewhere. I know that it's gotten very good with whenever you get somewhere, mm -hmm. but to say whenever you leave, I'm not sure that they have that yet. Mm -hmm. he's, he's running off. You have the newest Google operating system. I do have KitKat on here. So it did give me like you know. Where or when? Mm. When do you want to remind us, or where do you want? But to remind it may us? think where may where think is where not when to. leaving. It's probably when arriving. arrival. Yeah, we'll see if this reminds me when it realizes. Oh, hey, you're at that address in like ten minutes or something. Yeah. Uh, you know what does it do? So um, this may interrupt me in the middle of the show. So um, excellent. So hey, uh, let's. Uh, I want to get to some other stuff. I want to look at last year's predictions. We have a ton of them from last year, uh, and get into what uh, we think is going to happen in 2014. But first, I want to remind everybody of something really cool we're doing here locally. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, uh, we're doing the 400th episode of the Wrestling Mayhem Show next week uh, here, right up the road in Dormont. Uh, here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh at the Hollywood Theater. Uh, really, really nice. You've been there, right, Chilla? Yeah, I've been there. It's it's a nice. they got a balcony and everything. Uh, we're going to be showing No Holds Barred, the Hulk Hogan classic, uh, with, of course, uh, what was his name? Tiny Lister playing Zeus and all that. Uh, and we're going to have DJ Lunchbox and Bobby F. J-Town uh, kind of lampooning it live on the microphones and recording uh, at least a short version of our 400th episode here of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, the event is going to be free. Just, uh, you know, just something to, you know, you know, thanks, thank everybody for kind of supporting us and kind of giving us a reason to, to, to keep doing that and which, you know, turn into shows like this and everything uh, on our little network here. Uh, so it's going to be 7 p.m. Uh, December 17th. We got a Facebook uh, event up there. If you guys want more information on that, we'll tweet that out as well. Um, so you can go check that out. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what we do. Like I said, this is going to be our last episode. No more live streaming for the rest of the year. The whole two weeks that are left, three weeks I guess, because uh, New Year's and everything. And we'll be back fresh on January. Jeez, I don't even know. Whatever that first Tuesday in January is, we'll be back at this again. Uh, so let's take a look at last year's sixth. I what, think the sixth sounds about right. The first is a Wednesday. Yeah. So I'm guessing the sixth. Um, so let's take a look at last year's predictions real quick here, because these are going to be entertaining. Um, so apparently, uh, we'll start at the top here. Um, apparently, I was going to subscribe to Amazon. I didn't actually get into subscriptions. But I do buy everything from Amazon, just about. Um, so that definitely happened. Uh, and I also said nothing exciting was going to come from Apple, Google, Android, uh, et cetera, uh, making something different. Like everything... I, um, so you should just give me your glass. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, glass was already announced, wasn't it? There's was no. I don't. No, I at, don't, that, at that time, they still had Google I/O. They already did okay. the skydive. 
demo and all that stuff. It wasn't until like almost a year later. It was like February Mm -hmm. this past year. Uh, People who bought it at Google I.O. when that happened in the middle of 2012 didn't get into about February or March. Uh, And then everybody else had the opportunity to try to get one uh, like I did. Um, I got to say, Chromecast is the only thing that came kind of came out of left field for me. Well, I, you know, I, I go to kind of my my thing about the the war on the living room, so that that kind of fits in with, with mine. But yeah, Chrome, I but I don't know. I think that you continue to see. I, I don't think everything's on a, on a curve. Um, and I'm guessing everything is is on its curve as in a curve. I, I think I think uh, or unless that like makes the the idea, right of the bell curve. Or? The, the idea was like the tech, people were going to catch up to the technology. Mm-hmm. People were going to we're getting to this point where the technology was something I can hand you know a normal person and be able to deal with. Um, I see a lot of older people with iPhones and stuff. I don't know how many times I'm like at a restaurant and I see like a table of like fifty somethings mm-hmm. talking about their phones. Right. You know, I, I mean, it's on a different level than how we talk about them. But like, oh, I don't like when my phone does this. And some of them have, you know, Samsung, some of them have iPhone, stuff like that. But it's, it's really interesting. And, and I say, like, you know, they're having the same kind of conversations we are, more or less. Mm-hmm. You know, about, oh, I like this because of this. I like this because of that. But for different reasons. More, you know, probably, you know, lower end reasons. More usability reasons. Uh, but it's still really interesting to, to be able to see that. And I think more people are doing that. I think even, so you got... You know, those 50 somethings that now are using phones on a regular basis. Now we talk about the Chromecast, mm-hmm. it becomes a natural function for them to say, Oh, I put this back here. The Chromecast is being sold at Walmart. That's the, yeah, and it's, I think that the price point and the availability of the, of the, of the Chromecast itself, I think, is what makes it so palatable to anyone. I think you'll have people that buy it and plug it into their TV. And never use it. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it, but don't complain. No. With the fact that they, they spent I, I think I think that's one of the things where Chromecast gets to the point where it's on evening news, like mm-hmm. Siri is. And they say, oh, I got one of those like six months ago. It right. can do that now? You know, I, I think that might be mm-hmm. one of those things. I think it'll be really important also when you get like your Xfinity and everything, when they start, I, if they start supporting it too. Because mm-hmm. I think for the majority of people still have cable. And I think that adds that functionality i think if it continues to be marketed as hey you don't have to buy a smart tv we'll make your your normal tv smart like i think that needs to be more of the angle a little more clearer the angle they go at mm-hmm. on this is is it, it's kind of like an upgrade for your television well, you're going to get rid of the cable on the back of your tv and put a chromecast in there and just run it off your wi-fi then mm-hmm. and so i mean you think about it now I, I hear my mom complain constantly about how expensive her cable bill is I mean, to move somebody over to something like Chromecast, like that's almost an easy, it's too good to be true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What we talked about, well, here's the other conversation we were having last year is, uh, you know, I I think the year before I said core cutting, you know, may be bigger. And and I know Rob always comes back and say, well, you describe how you do, you know, oh, I go into this and I pull this up and this is how I watch the video. That's too much to explain to a normal person, you know, is this that step closer. I don't think it's perfect. It's not, I push the button and it happens, but I think as the general populace gets more used to these, that becomes more of a real idea. I would agree with that, but I, I think things like the the TiVo make that mm-hmm. transition easy too. True. Cause, so my, uh, I have TiVo, I'm a quarter but how cutter. much is the TiVo? One time charge, one, about 150 depending on what mm-hmm. you want. 150 to 200 versus 35 bucks and i don't have a subscription right right and then i pay about 10 bucks a month but i have dvr mm-hmm. which is an older concept people are used to yeah it's an older concept that people are used to and i have netflix amazon prime like i have all those yeah. things and they automatic it automatically pulls those in so uh, that's where i could see it. i i think they need i think the dvr aspect needs to get there Mm-hmm. Or your ABC, NBC, CBS, CW, mm-hmm. all those companies mm-hmm. need to get their streaming apps working on that. Cynthia, you had something? Yeah, I was going to say, up here in um, Butler, we don't have Comcast. We have Armstrong, which is one of the local, you know, one of the independent um, cable companies. I was on a panel with um, Joe Taylor, who's the um, sort of the operations manager for the Butler area. And he was saying that um, between 2013, 2014, they're finally seeing the transition where um, they have more people that are just um, internet subscribers than are, 
you know, digital cable television subscribers. Really? That this is a turning point for them. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's going to be like that everywhere, but this, when you think about Western Pennsylvania, you know, Ohio and West Virginia, their, their territory, this is very middle America. Yeah. That's funny you say that because I just got cable for the first time, per se. I just got a new internet connection through Comcast. I only wanted the internet. But it was cheaper for me to throw in one of their packages where they had a couple of cable channels involved. Yeah. And when the guy came to put my install, I told him, I really could care less if this is an HD or not. I'm more concerned with that connection coming through. And he says, I'm starting to hear that more and more and more from people. So because everybody's got their Chromecast mm-hmm. and their Rokus and uh, – and, and they want to make sure that works. Well, so you know what? I want to touch on something real quick that Cynthia brought up earlier, and that was that she said she got a new Blu-ray player. And in that Blu-ray player was, I guess, some kind of an app or where to run a Netflix, to run maybe uh, It has a uh, whole Pandora. interface where you can connect to the internet. You can mm-hmm. connect to – they've got – I mean, it's kind of the things you were describing for Chromecast, uh, a small, much smaller list of them comes through this Blu-ray player. The Blu-ray player cost me $80. I, I have a, a similar one. I have a Vizio that had that same stuff inside of there. And that That's just like my surround sound system. It has Hulu, it has uh, Voodoo, Netflix, uh, a couple other ones on it too. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, I just got a notification on my glass to pick up milk. So, so, it's, know, when so <laughs> it's, it's when you get there. Um, so, And that came right through. I didn't even knock my head. Like It mm-hmm. like came straight through. And things usually don't do that on here. Like I said. What I like, my just to interrupt back to that. What I like when I tell the, the to do list, whether I go through Siri or directly, is that you can say when I'm near something. So because I say like when I'm near Giant Eagle, remind me to do this, mm. and that is much more useful to me even than when I'm leaving a place when I'm arriving. I really need to so, do that because it's you always know, so we'll say when you arrive at. But, yeah, because it's, so, it's always I get home and then I forget the thing. I, then I remember that thing and I should have got while I was out of house, right? Yeah, so. so I like when I'm driving by the grocery store. It's like, hey, don't remember, don't forget you wanted to get this thing. It's like, oh, perfect, and then I can turn. Yeah, uh, brother Sorg's in the chat room. He he actually works oops, in the electronics section at Walmart. And he says um, that that just about all Blu-ray players there. So yeah, everybody's being introduced to it. Like even if they don't plug it in, like it's there. Every buddy that gets a Blu-ray player is used to seeing Netflix. So like, oh, maybe I should look into this. And that explains why everybody has it. You know, at this point, because you're like, well, I got <coughs> how many people like have nothing that will play it, even if they have a computer, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 you know, if, if you're completely devoid of, of technology, I understand, but, but it's just so prominent right now. It's yeah, ridiculous. Trip over Having it, it's it like perfect. that is a big deal because, you know, that you could um, add that channel to like a, you know, a Wii or whatever, but then you have to go to the process and go through the steps of adding it, even though it's free. And the mm-hmm. process is, confusing I, yes. I can bet that there's hundreds of people that have the access for it but they don't know how to do it but they, so with these other players it just becomes yeah it's it's not no harder than changing a channel exactly well, even I, the smart tv i have so i've i have a samsung and it's, it's a smart tv i find the actual interface kind of overwhelming uh-huh. and you have to install like they have a they have a huge app catalog but you have to install the app and then it's like and I'll just use Netflix on some other device because the I, it's, it's already there. It's it's prominent. Mm-hmm. It's easy to mm-hmm. use. Um, that that's like my mind. My Samsung is just so cumbersome. It's just easier to go into the Xbox and run it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I started using the I hooked up the Wii in the office because I'm like, well, it's a slow Roku. Uh, you know, I'll put the Wii in. It has I didn't even know it had Amazon Prime on it. Uh, but it's got Hulu, it's got Netflix. I'm like, well, we'll use this for a while. But mm-hmm. I was really disappointed because the Hulu is basically just a web page. Uh, like, there's no interface. It's just like this is a web page, and this is the browser like we usually do. It's just formatted maybe a little bit differently for for the Wii. Let so, me throw this out there: if it has these apps, it's rootable, which means we're able. Oh, to, it is, and I know there's a homebrew mm-hmm. thing too. And we're able so. to go in and adjust things to do exactly what we want them to do, and look and how now, we want. And now that the Wii is end of life, I'm actually in. in if I break it, I can get one super cheap. I'm actually considering doing homebrew and see what I can, you know, what the community's done because I haven't checked into it for a while. So, um, so we'll jump the since we're on this topic, Chilla, you said that uh, in this next year, uh, we, there would be a war for the living room. You, you love the war for the living room. <laughs> uh, new Xbox, Apple TV with apps, and Google will try it again. Google tried again. We've been talking about it all night. Like Apple one. TV is getting more and more apps, and there's a new mm-hmm. Xbox. So you're pretty spot so on. So I'm, I'm waiting for what I, I what I think is going to be next is the Apple TV needs to get 
a developer base. People need to. I think that's going to be. I feel like we've been talking about for yeah, that we've for been, two years. We've, so we've been talking about for that for a like, while. Like I, I, um, they're. I don't think or they're, they're or you're going to see some new device. I don't think they're in a rush to push that thing because I think they're selling those hockey pucks just as yeah. easily with what they've had. You know. I think when 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 you see a slowdown in people buying them, yeah, they'll jump. I I think they'll they'll open that. Yeah, they're, they're going to push that as far as they can. They have no pressure as long as they see you know that curve looking good. Um, let's see if there's anybody else who's actually here. Uh, Frank, you said the yep. Nexus Q becomes the first Android set top box that works. Shot it. <laughs> <laughs> no more works from you. <laughs> oh. He's being picked on the shoulder again. <laughs> He's like, no, it, I don't know. I think that I really want to think that they're going to try to make it like make a comeback with something else that has a a processor that's still supported because uh, Texas Instruments kind of quit supporting all the drivers for that processor. So that's a whole nother bag of worms for people with the Galaxy Nexus. But um, yeah. The, the original Nexus Q is dead. There's no two ways. Well, there's that. a there's a new Nexus box they're they're proposing Nexus might TV. be coming out. Yeah. Nexus TV yeah. next year. So I mean, I think it might live on. The name is living on. Something Android for your TV is coming out. You know, we have something Chrome for your TV. So I guess we'll have something Android for your TV. Well, it'll be interesting too because they can really. I think that will put them on par with Xbox as far as being able to communicate and talk to the Xbox One. Mm-hmm. If they can do that, okay whatever the okay google tv or okay nexus oh tv is there so and it's an overlay which is what the original i think the sony the sony the is, sony device was supposed to be an overlay device the granny your android chromecast gets a microphone there, i mean yeah i mean or you it runs off the microphone on the device that's controlling it that's the problem i i still have that's the one thing i still have that i think that the chromecast falls short on is you need that other device yeah, so for that, that but, but that's that's the trick. That's the smoke and mirrors of it. That's, that's the, the thirty five dollar, $35 dollar thing, and we're offloading the rest of that. Just like that um, that thing, the automatic thing that goes in my car. They would say, "Oh, I can tell my car is because of the GPS stuff." No, it doesn't have GPS. It's riding off of the GPS and the rest of the technology that's doing the rest of the handshake mm-hmm. on your phone. That's not unlike uh, what you got with Google Glass as well, right? I mean, we think about it. You're the glass does so many things, but it has to be hooked up to the phone. The phone does right. the real heavy well, lifting, like right? Screen yeah. sharing. You have to leave your monitor open. And that's one of the, that's the thing where I think it falls short. Like, I don't have to have... I have to have zero other devices for me to watch Netflix on my, I'm on my Apple yeah. TV. But if you want to use the voice aspect of it, there's going to have to be a microphone on something. But give me a microphone on that device. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. want to have to have... I can leave my... Because now I have a wearable technology, I can leave my phone upstairs. So, oh, that's, I mean, that's going to be a myth. So when they get to the point where where I can push stuff to Chrome wearing this, you know, on mm-hmm. my face, and say, you know, boom, hey, uh, pull up Netflix, watch uh, Orange is the New Black. Right. You know, and, and then that becomes the OK Chromecast. Mm-hmm. I just did OK Google. That was good. And I'm now <laughs> searching something. OK. Um, <laughs> you really want Jarvis. I do. You I want think an it's autonomous all around. Well, system. it's not. A, it's not. A, it's not that I want an autonomous. I don't want to have to have parts A, B, C. I want one piece. Let's that, that lets me run with it. Let's touch on. Uh, let's pick on uh, the rest of the people that weren't here this year uh, to defend themselves. Jim Loke, a friend up in Boston, says uh, this is the year that Facebook is serious about developing a phone. It hits the market and it's a massive failure. So that's kind of true. That's pretty much what happened. I mean, I, I mean, they didn't make the phone, no, yeah. but it was a serious play. Mm-hmm. It was this is a Facebook version HTC phone, right? Um, and it, uh, can you get one now? I never knew anybody with one. No, that's, I know a lot of people. Well, no, but I thought they. So that <laughs> you have a lot of Twitter friends, right? That home app, no. though. <laughs> The, the home app then they released, didn't they? Yeah. So you can get that. You don't have to have the HTC. Yeah. So, it, but, but Facebook still, I don't think a lot that. of people jumped on that. No. No. Like, do I do, do I really need more? What is it more raw Facebook? No, it's just a it's a widget and a, some plugins and Ugh. and an app. It, it's basically just a launcher. That's all it is. But th- okay. doesn't it have a widget that runs on the home screen? Uh, well, it basically is your home screen. 
yeah, kind of places okay. are okay. menus and whatnot. Um, looking at Google Play right now, it's rated two and a half stars. Um, let's see if it has the number installed. Installs one million to five million. So it has a decent bit of installs out there. Yeah, but how many people were trying it that were techie, you know? Well, how many of those are still sitting in a warehouse? That's another thing. That's true. There you go. All right. The current version 1.1, so it doesn't look like they did that much <laughs> uh, updating to it. Um, they just had it right the first time. Rob, of course, said uh, litigation between Samsung and Apple continues, eventually uh, appeals to Supreme Court, overturns to patent law being changed. Now, then he said this may not happen in 2013, but this is a longer, mm. longer prediction. Um, but then this just happened in Congress, though, like a week ago. So like, it passed. So, so not passed not exactly the way he said. It has a house. It has a, there's a, one in the House and one in the Senate. And they have to both pass them and then merge. So this is. It was very promising. But it still is in one of the three branches right now. Mm -hmm. So, correct ish. Oh yeah, I, there yeah. more to come. More to come, and it could still happen if the if if this law doesn't completely squash all that stuff. Uh, this could still rise up through the courts because I mean, there's still what, what, what's up. What, now you're showing, you're holding up your, your Samsung with the Apple Samsung sticker. with an Apple sticker. Yeah, I don't know what side of the fence to be on yet. I'll tell you when the, when the case is over. Mm -hmm. Um, now Riz, he says that MySpace makes it back big. I think the year before he said that uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook would die. So that shows you along the lines where he was. Um, MySpace came back, I think had already come back. That's just Tom. At that point. So Tom's back, but I don't think anybody, I don't think it really took off. Well, Justin certainly Timberlake said bought it, didn't he, or whatever? Justin Timberlake bought it. What's that, Cindy? It's certainly not back big. I mean, no. Well, not even sure yeah. it's there. So. Like, it's it's not, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of traffic. I'm going to go to the front page and see what happens. I get, I get periodic for all my old accounts, periodic, please come back to MySpace. Uh, stuff going on so it's now like like a gaming community or something isn't it uh i think it's more music that they, they really push the music on this side um but it's just so like big and like it reminds me of windows 8 didn't justin timberlake wasn't he part of yeah the yeah, money it, behind it yeah yeah he, he was a big pusher on it. i mean this looks like vivo to me <laughs> so which just came up on uh chromecast so um back to our list we also had from Norm Hulesman, he says that this is the year of the Twitter-Facebook war. Was there much of a war? I don't I think, think they just carried on as I'm, they I, have. And I'm interested in the one prior. Hmm. IPOs. Wills. Or... Wills comment. New connector for phones, etc. And also, it's not going to be called the iPhone 6. Well, now here's... Well, it wasn't. So, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on, on, a, on a limb to, to try to figure out what we were talking about at that point in time. The new connector for phones, I don't think, is the whole connector with the iphone because that would have already no 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 came no, 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 no he he was he was saying I, I listened back to this today uh he was saying uh they're going to because we just had iphone just switched mm -hmm. over and it was the new connector and he says well everybody else is going to get a new connector in this next year did so you hear about usb3 make us buy that's what, what i was thinking the so biggest <laughs> buy a new connector so usb3 is coming out uh is on the books and it's going to be like the iphone one is where you can put it in it's, it's reversible but it's going to so. redo the port on the machine. Yeah. So you're going to have to either yes. have adapters or your machine's going to have the old that school was the USB like, port. You're going to have dongles. There's going to be dongles everywhere. Now everybody else gets to come to the dongle party with us <laughs> in the Apple community. Uh, well, and I, I, you know what? I hope that everyone just leaves USB because of this. I mean, they made it seem like it was the end of the world. What else in, is there? In, in the Apple side. Firewire? Yeah, we'll go back to Firewire. I, I'm still... Using Firewire to a great extent right now. Scuzzy. Scuzzy. <laughs> oh, man. Let's put, you know, this is just, just parallel port. I think there's Bluetooth. one on that yeah, one Everyone, will just, everyone will just start using Bluetooth. There you go. Bluetooth we'll LE, that, well, high speed, The, the headphone range. ports, right? Why can't, those headphone ports can send data back and forth like a phone. Hey, didn't they use that, that? That was the connector on one of the, on the Apple, the one without the screen that was the clip. The shuffle. The yeah. Shuffle, yeah. They they charged it through the the well that the and that's board. how you synced it too. I think the, mm -hmm. the USB yeah. cord on one end and, mm -hmm. a, and a headphone jack on the other. Yep, yep. There's data through that. Um, well, you got to think of like you have the volume control and everything comes through when you have your headphones. Mm -hmm. So like, there's definitely like some some work going on there. 
Um, Alex Carr says uh, he was looking. He was looking for. This is kind of hard to explain. I think we even had it interpreted at the time. He was looking for a centralized social network that and then, oh, then it becomes self-aware. Um, so he was thinking like you would be able to post your posts one place and they will go to your Facebook, Twitter. Like there was going to be a better method of doing that. I don't think that's really happened. I'm still using Hootsuite and paying for the damn thing. Uh, and, and Google Plus still isn't easy to cross post a lot of stuff to and back and forth, depending on what you're trying to do with it. Um, if someone, someone can develop that, I think it's like a million dollar idea. There are tools that do it, but there's no... Like, but it doesn't work well. No, no, it doesn't. It, there's always problems with it. There's always... like I don't even like using Hootsuite as much anymore because I don't like how pictures don't come up now on Twitter because that's something mm -hmm. that I need to look at. I want my stuff to be visual so people pay attention to it, right? Um, especially for clients and stuff. You know, so so it's like, well, I don't want that Owie link because that's not going to pop up. I don't want to use Instagram now because it doesn't show up the way I wanted to in Twitter. You know, um, it, it, that kind of stuff really kind of changes the way you go about things. Uh, Bobby says, um, but actually, Cindy, you have anything to say on that? You, you, I know you do a lot of social media stuff. Well, I was going to say, actually, my tip for the week, I'll just jump ahead and give my tip. I've been um, using a combination. I've been, I'm always trying to do this better. So lately, I've been using Pocket whenever I see a link mm -hmm. you know, on Twitter and I want to read it later and not read it now. Pocket's been awesome for that. And then from Pocket, it can go to um, Buffer. And Buffer can post in a, in a Hootsuite-like like, Hootsuite -like way. I don't know if it does your pictures the way you want them to, but I would check it out because it's, it's free if you're only doing like one Facebook account and one Facebook page, and, and then it's only paid when you get into doing multiples. Um, but it's, it's pretty easy, and I, I like that I can you know, post things at, a, at timed intervals. It's, it's a much nicer, nicer way to not have like a whole block of retweets. You, know, yeah. you can kind of stagger them. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I use that auto schedule and the general scheduling calendar a lot on Hootsuite to try to just not stick everything together, you know. Yeah, this is I, I, I offer this as a tip, but really it's a it's a plea. It's you know not dear Santa, but dear everyone in the world, stop just randomly retweeting for ten minutes and, <laughs> and not doing anything else. I was sometimes you, you're, you're catching up and you're like, yeah, 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 bink, 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 bink. It's it's a habit thing, I think, especially if it's a personal account, as a person account, that's that's a social thing. Like one, one of the things, I, and I love Pocket. Uh, Pocket is one of the, the the things that I've started to use more I always daily forget. and all the time. Especially so, so I have one workflow where if I'm at home and I see something that I think of for work, I actually take and I actually use their email piece where you can email. Yeah. The, the pocket account and mm -hmm. because it comes from you it knows to throw it in your pocket mm -hmm. the one thing i wish is i wish i could do that in reverse from work so at work i can't i can't get on my gmail account because mm -hmm. it's blocked um i wish there was a way for me from my work machine to send an email from my corporate address to then to the pocket address and it add it to my create, personal address. like an email account that all it does is forward yeah i guess i could i could i probably could do an if this then that there you go with Ooh. like gmail that says if if the message comes from my corporate account and the subject line is link then forward it to this mm -hmm. address or something like that uh chachi says that uh he he said blackberry would die he was so close they're kind of on a Death spiral, oh, they are. Right? Well, Today guys, they're complaining. I got bad news about that. Mm. I did a PA brew tour about two weeks ago for a Canadian bachelor party, and uh, all of them had blackberries. Well, Canadian. Well, then it's not going to die. There's people. That There's are still a little there. bit There's of phone people. pride in Canada yeah. for the blackberry being their thing. I think. I, I agree. I'm just saying. I don't know how close to death it is because if there's an entire country that's still embracing it, then it's not know. an entire country. It, I mean, they're, they they tried to be bought, and then they weren't even able, able to be bought. They are really not well. They tried to buy the penguins. Well, now they're now they're crying that that like they're not getting enough support from the carriers. So I guess AT and T, because you know the carrier ha ends up having to push out the the OS update. Yeah. In in most cases, AT and T is like, yeah, we'll get to your OS when we get to it. Well, well, you're not one of the top ones. You know, they got enough of a crapshoot with android updates mm -hmm. going on so yeah 
And yeah. remember when BlackBerry made a move for the pens? No, I don't. Oh, I don't remember I don't. that. Uh, Bobby F J Town said there will be a Red Zone app on Xbox Live. Isn't there kind of? The, I don't know if that's Red Zone that they have on the new one, but there de- there's definitely a really big NFL integration. Going it's the on. I think it's like the NFL Network app. Yeah, it may Which not be. That, is that Red includes, Zone? That probably includes okay. Red Zone because that's that's like an offshoot of the NFL Network, I think. Yeah. Um, also, Flan will be an Android version. At the time, I think you had revealed to me a key lime pie, and I yeah, and they flan. that they said they said that that was actually going to be it, and then they flan. switched to no, so not flan, flan, key lime pie. Oh yeah, pie. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. it was going to be Kit changed Kat. to Kit Kat. Yeah. Uh, also, random ones from the chat. We said, but I didn't see who they came from. Uh, Disney's going to buy Nintendo, and Ouya versus Steambox will be the real console war. Yeah, mm. we kind of have Steambox coming finally, so. And I think Ouya's are being discounted in Best Buy's right now. So, all right. So let's get into the part we've been saying that we've been waiting hmm. for. Wait a minute. Look at the date, but I'm still saying. Yeah. So predictions, and again in chat room, please uh, put your predictions in. If anybody wants to join and tell us theirs, uh, let me know. And I'll bring you in the hangout as well. Uh, so prediction time. Who has got the first prediction? Who wants to go first? Android's next version will be Laffy Taffy. Laffy Taffy? That's a guess. I'm saying this year Apple's going to make a move in search. In search of what? (laughs) They're going to offer their own search engine? Like they're going to try to compete with Bing and Google? Yes. Outside of the realm of searching their own content. Side note, Juggler John claims the uh, Disney buying Nintendo line in the chat room. That's a good, That's a good one. What was what is Apple going to do with all of its money? <laughs> <laughs> they're Maybe building they they're building the space station search. campus. There's that. Mm-hmm. It's definitely that. Uh, they, and they are buying up more and more companies. They're, they're I mean they're buying up the search they're bu- buying up search companies. They the just Visual bought the Connect, Connect company. Sensor yeah. um, company. There's there's definitely a lot of what are they doing with this, you but, know. Now now to put things in perspective, they bought the Australian fingerprint sensor company three years ago, and we now just have the fingerprint sensor in the phone. Right there. So are they going to accelerate acquisition and then putting it into production? I don't know. It's, not been, their, it's not been their strong point. I think it's definitely I, like a hedging the bets, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think money can make things go faster. It just, yeah. I mean, you can buy different competing versions, and then maybe one of them will go faster. But I feel you can't make you can't they're, accelerate things. They're not they're not the type to put something in the market until it actually works, and it works extremely well. I feel like this is their version of Google's, you know, you know, moonshots. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of like this is a technology. You know, okay, somebody else started. You know, instead of like building these kind of in house technologies, they say. Okay, this could be something in a few years. I mean, we're, we're, you know, high beacons is a thing right now, right? So, but, so that's one of the things that I, I think you're going to see. I think you're going to see them move in to the the house. I and there's been some patent um, things where I've seen where I think you're going to see them in that home automation area, mm-hmm. which is why I think you see a section of their store that is the Hue and the Wemo. I think you're going to see that, and I think you're going to see it in the watch, and I think you're going to see it through iBeacon. The interesting thing that, that I didn't realize, and it was covered on Twit this week, is is that every device since the iPhone 4S is in fact an iBeacon. <laughs> I love, I love, and I loved. Uh, I think on MacBreak today they they were saying uh, uh, the idea that well, all of these all of these uh, uh, phones with the technology we didn't know we were walking around with. That if you're a privacy junkie, it's going to freak you out. Mm-hmm. Just got turned on. Yeah, and I, and I think you're going to have. It's just going to be like AirDrop. You're you're going to be able to say, don't let, mm-hmm. don't let anyone see me. Don't let people that aren't in my contacts see me, and don't let. Yeah, or let everyone. I I have mine. And ideally, well, and ideally, hopefully, it's all opt in. The the, mm-hmm. the first, uh, well, of course, Nordstrom's been doing this, but I think Nordstrom's they didn't opt you in, mm-hmm. like, or they auto, they auto opt you in or whatever. Um, but I know the Apple Store when you when you open up your Apple Store app on your phone and it's, it explains to you the concept. And, you, and for those who don't know, I can basically in the context of what they're doing in the Apple Store is if I walk up to. I think it, this also interacts with their iPad displays since they have the same mm-hmm. technology. 
So it knows that I walked up to a Mac Mini because there's an iPad right there for it and it maybe pops you a notification. Would you like to learn more about uh, a, a Mac Mini, iPad Mini, whatever. Um, in Nordstrom's, they were using it to also, you know, and obviously Apple's probably doing the same thing here, to know where are you at, where you're going in the store, taking that information. There's something they were talking about where they figured out that like Black Friday, everybody left the store at 6 a.m., because they had been in line all night and there's no restaurants and all the restaurants just opened or no, they're not. Okay. Well, actually they've all been in the store all night with, for the black Friday sales and there's no restaurants nearby the store. And, and, you know, so now they can kind of move their, you know, black Friday sales or something around that, you know, mm-hmm. um, they should just have carts of breakfast food. That would be an easier. Well, solution. maybe that's something they'll do to, to yeah, solve that. Cart. Right. You're saying no one will ever leave. Complimentary bagels and food coffee. Drone. Yeah. Food drone. Your snack drone is coming. I want a drone. Now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the eye drone. Yeah. But I, I, I think that the, the eye beacon piece I, it, and, and the watch with that interactivity, I think you're going to hit a mass I mean, audience. I think it'd be fun. It would, and I wonder, like, I, I feel like this is, I think this is a pretty... Um, um, this isn't like an open thing. Although they said it was going to be open, but it wouldn't be nice to do something like that where you walk into the studio here and you get a message, Hey, here's a Wi-Fi password and everything. So you can, you know, mm-hmm. hop on with us, the public Wi-Fi I set up here for you guys. Or, you know what I, I look at it as those, the, the, I don't know how you would do that. Places like, like that want you to buy something to be able to use their Wi-Fi, put the, put that in an eye beacon that somehow gets sent out. So you, what you somehow pay with the device and then it receives. Oh, then you're, then you're kind of X amount of, then you're kind of stringing in with like, like square or passbook or something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, yeah, you can pair it with some of those other technologies. I think this is going to be really interesting. I, I, I think it's going to be, it's going to change. It's going to be a huge privacy debate. First of all, because we, uh, well, there, don't turn on, then leave Bluetooth off. Is it just you turn off Bluetooth and you don't have it? Yeah, because it's Bluetooth LE. And typically I had, but now we're getting, but, but then we're also getting to this point where how, like I have never used Bluetooth before this year. And I use it for every There's now. There's so many other ways besides that now. What's that? There's so many other ways besides Bluetooth. On my screen right here to connect and share, I have four options besides Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Besides Wi-Fi and, and So Bluetooth. you're using NFS, NFC? I can uh, do so you, you still have infrared. Yeah, I mean, I can send them all. and I can pretty yeah. much... There's not just one anymore. There's so mm-hmm. many options. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, like, the the glass and the, and the automatic are the reasons I have Bluetooth on now, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess they're the low level ones, so they're not sucking my battery down as much as they could be. Um, but so now a lot of people, I think, have all this, you know, especially if they're going to an Apple store, they're kind of in technology probably. So they're like, oh, I have this thing. It told me to turn on Bluetooth, and now it is, and now this beacon's on. You know, now I'm getting now I'm getting washed when I am I'm in Nordstrom's. Um, and apparently, the problem with Nordstrom's was was they did put up signs say, "Hey, we're using eye beacons, so you know if you have this device, we we know where you're at." But apparently, nobody saw the signs, so they started made, making a fuss about it. So um, it's going to be interesting. I I, I, I don't know. Um, From a marketing standpoint, it's awesome. It's big data. Oh yeah. I mean, hey, I saw. 15 people standing in front of these jeans at this rack. And then all of a sudden those same beacons showed up by this shirt. So automatically it's going to recommend it based on how many other people have gone from one to the next. You'll find out exactly what displays are attracting people to come over to them and check them out. Say, mm-hmm. you know, for instance, or, you know, what are the patterns going through your store? I, that, that's, that's tremendous. That's tremendous. Um, awesome. What, what's going next? Are these predictions for next year? Yeah, predictions I, I for 2014. The um, uh, we were talking earlier about sort of the getting getting all your gadgets in your kitchen to talk to your Google Glass. I think um, what I what I read a little bit about was um, I mean there, there's just not enough consistency between them between the different protocols. I mean I think back to when Bluetooth was they were just thinking of starting Bluetooth. And the fact that there was a standard, the standard um, was put together by the different manufacturers, that I think is what enabled it to become the thing that we all lean on. And I know that there's other options, you know, like, like Munz was saying, but for, like for my mom, you know, she, she's not going to want to try all these different things. She wants to be able to do one thing and, and have, like, know kind of how all that works. And so, so I think that we need to see a similar thing in this sort of Internet of Things devices for everything to 
be easier to, to connect and for app developers and other people to be able to do things, have it all kind of work. And so I guess there's this new um, uh, uh, protocol created, I think, by Qualcomm called AllJoy. Um, and so that's, um, so that's my prediction for next year is that whether it's this one or something else, that there will be some consensus that people come to. And until there is that, we, we won't really see, you know, people's refrigerators, like your average person being able to turn on their coffee maker, mm -hmm. you know, from home or whatever it is. I mean, from, yeah. from elsewhere. You're really going to have to, yeah, you're right. You really do have to buy into one technology or another. You know, you can say, oh, okay, does my phone have this? this well, I, I, I agree. I, I don't think you have to buy into one. And I, I see this being something that a lot of people can definitely leverage. And I look at the way that, that if this, then that has created and tapped the APIs on the shoulder to, 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 to automate some of those services. Yeah. I don't think if this, then that is simple enough to hand to no. my grandfather. No. But I think this, what Cindy's talking about, it definitely puts us in that direction of, Hey, everything can talk to everything because there's going to be a common way to speak. Same yeah, you need that. And, and it was only when Bluetooth came along that you could have that with, you know, headset devices, like everyone's device, like whatever de device you bought is going to work with whatever your phone was. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a API standards, the good stuff. Sorry, I was just reminded to pick up milk yet again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't picked it up. How do you tell I, it you, you did it? I, I, well, I guess I should have. Oh, okay. I'll have to notify it this time. All right. Uh, we're running low on time, so I want to shoot through this. Frank, do you have one? Uh, Android's going to get more Google Now integration, and we'll try to figure out other ways to uh, get that together. Actually, I, I'll bet you we'll see Google Now uh, somehow working its way into a Chromecast. <laughs> Somehow to give you a little notifications on the bottom of your TV or something like that. Ooh, I like that idea. Nice. I like that idea definitely. Um, what about you, Munz? I, I, I'll go back to it. I, I think uh, we're going to see a, a big change in in Apple entering the search arena. I, I don't think there's any way we can fight it. I think in in turn the way we search is pretty much going to change altogether in 2014. They have that data center. The way that we've searched for stuff online is changing by every one of the things we've talked about today, giving us a new way to ask for information. You're asking, Frank just pointed out, you know, okay, Google, you point, or Google now rather, you pointed out, okay, Google. I mean, we're asking questions now and search is gonna actually have to morph to meet that. Yeah. And I think that's where a company like Apple is kind of ahead of a couple others and the fact that they are gonna kind of build it from the front back instead of from the back forward. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to say, that isn't, aren't they using Wolfram Alpha? That's one of their big ones. That's one of them for Siri. Yeah, yeah. So Siri, Siri is, heavily relies on Wolfram Alpha. Is Wolfram Alpha integrated into Google? I don't think so. No. 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 Google uses Sony Analytics. Exactly. Okay. So I think we're going to see a, a great big change in how search is done. I'm sure there'll still be some version of a search engine available, but I think at this point, it's going to lose its title as a search engine and become more of an interface. Mm -hmm. It's a search interface now. Because you can search on anything, and if if Chili gets his way anywhere with anything, just saying it into the air. I mean, you walk mm -hmm. past a, a kiosk, it'll be like, I wonder where this is. You're 200 meters from your destination. <laughs> you know, this, this is the weirdest thing. For the voice thing, uh, and I'm fine with this, because like, anytime I'm thinking I want to use it is, like, as long as I'm not, if I'm at home, or I'm in the car, or something, it makes sense. But, like, randomly talking search to myself okay glass blah 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 like when i just did it um <laughs> sorry i just got a notification apparently it knocks it on for a second read a, oh, no i don't want to reply <laughs> <laughs> hi chachi um <laughs> uh but 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 it doesn't and maybe the, you know i guess this is a bluetooth guy hey, actually did anybody see the, the the google glass hole video where he's like at a mall or something and he's talking and he's saying stuff like by people and kind of sort of looking at them and, and they're like, are you talking to me? It's like, oh, oh no, I'm on Google Glass. This is Google Glass, you know, you kind of, you know. Uh, it's, it's kind of a fun one. Oh, I hope I didn't just send something. Um, <laughs> 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 Don't talk about the device while you're wearing the device, apparently. Um, but, you know, but that's not a publicly, like, I'm not going to do it walking around downtown Pittsburgh, then I'm the crazy one. 
you know. Um, I think it'll. I think it'll become more socially acceptable. You think I so? so? I think yeah. it'll be no. I think it'll be as a socially annoying yet well, put up with as guy on Bluetooth call. Yeah, you know, it, it, it'll become moderately acceptable because I'm already the guy who talks to my phone in the office. They're used to it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's but and what's the difference between talking to your phone and talking on your exactly phone? Exactly right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so if I can piggyback on yours, I think this actually kind of lines up. I mean, it kind of brings all this stuff together. Uh, but there was a really there was a conversation. I think it was probably on triangulation or something a few months ago. Where oh, no, I think it was probably a Mac break thing where they were talking about the personal cloud. It could have been a Google thing. Uh, one of those shows. Um, this idea, you know, we already have it with, you know, my wife's got a Fitbit. We're talking about, like, our phones are collecting all this data. We have high beacons now. Um, I think your my, my car now is collecting data. You'll have these devices. You know, we're talking about your locational data and what we're telling it. Google now is collecting all this information and providing us with, you know, hey, do you want to go here and everything like that? Hey, you're near this, do this. Uh, but learning more, like, take, uh, I'm fascinated by how the Fitbit and the automatic takes your body, what your body does, you know, physically with that of the Fitbit and then what your car does. And now it just kind of like takes all that data and visualizes it for me. Uh, somebody was talking about like eventually you're going to have something that, you know, do, just does your pulse maybe you have around your wrist or something's taking, you know, uh, uh, you know, take it, keep an eye on your sodium intake or, 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 you know, your insulin level or something like that. Can you imagine like, like, Biomedical uh, chips. Biomedical stuff. I don't know about chips or that kind of stuff. Something that, that's going to take in that information, you know, put it into an app like a Fitbit does, like Automatic does, and it becomes this quantified data that that we can, in, in a way that we regular people can interpret. Um, there's already something, uh, that we, I don't know if I mentioned this on the show, we had a guy, uh, uh, Matthew Keener, I think his name is, uh, he, he did he did uh, some, some, he was actually at TEDx Grandview this last year, and uh, he did some stuff with us out at Seclair, I think it was gonna be a little bit more, but he's got this app called Emote, where um, you talk about how, you tell it what you're feeling right now, and much like you get a graph of, this is how much activity I had for the day. This is how I slept. Then you have a graph of, okay, you were depressed here. Okay, you were angry here. Okay, you were happy here. And let's analyze why that is, you know. And again, it's a little cumbersome because it's I pull up the app and I have to actually do something. But what if we get to a point where you get a prompt for that, you know? What if we get a point where, you know, something like that is actually, you know, tracked a little more. Or look at Xbox One. They can tell. They can try to read body temp. They can read oh, yeah, pulse. That, exactly. Read. That, so that's doing from an outside device. Right. But you know, how far away from like you just have like that Fitbit does all of that stuff too. You know, I'm surprised the Fitbit doesn't take your pulse. Uh, actually, I think the newer one does now. Maybe uh, like Missy has the Fitbit, but then she also has a pedometer. You know, it's like mm -hmm. really we have to go back to that tech, older technology. And I think that's where you're gonna, th those devices and those technologies have to converge. They will, and I think they are. You're seeing yeah. more and more features too. Like like the Fitbit now is like, well, now we tell we not only do none of those steps, we know your elevation. So mm -hmm. now that's another data point. And well, the now, Fitbit they added the watch at least onto it, and now. they added a so watch to it. Tell I think, time. I think it receives notifications too. Like it actually does receive notifications okay. from your from your like iPhone. It wasn't like it wasn't. It's not as full featured or anything. Mm -hmm. It's mostly like you get a call, you get a notification, something. It will. This it will technology push exists, and I'll tell yeah. you guys where it exists. And it's, this is, you know, the tangent. But in my medical field, I come across diabetics that have a, a very bad problem controlling insulin. So they have an implantable insulin pump that's mm -hmm. able to dictate based on your body the amount that you need to regulate your system. So we are already seeing that technology at play, and I'm not talking about the old pumps that look like pagers that are that are aligned into your into your colon or in, into your into your gallbladder. Rather, these are the things that sit on the outside of them mm -hmm. that is helping their body to create this almost in the same method that you're talking about. So we are very close to to this biomedical technology. Um, from the chat room, uh, Bobby F. J. Town says the Nike Fuel Band will become self-aware and turn on those that are in shape. It will allow the nerds to run the world for reals. Frank is calling me back on my glass. It's been a glass <laughs> crazy episode. Uh, I think I think one thing that needs to happen, and it's not necessarily something that I'm sure someone will figure it out. Someone needs to figure out a better way of input on the mobile side so filling out your name and your phone number and every like if you want me to order something online i don't want to have to leave my phone to go back to my pc 
but there's still not a good bridged gap of autofill for who I am, what my credit card information is, what my home address is, the three-digit security card on the back. Something, there, there needs to be a better input methodology. And I don't think in that case it's voice, but someone's going to have to figure out identity management. What, and Google could do it, Apple could do it, anybody could do it, but someone needs to actually move that forward. A dial barcode chip to identify yourself. <laughs> well, I think it's going to be an interesting year okay. as usual. I mean, look how far we've gone since last year. I mean, we're where I, I, I really think that wearable thing is 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 the thing of the year, uh, probably second in light of the changes in TV. You know, I, um, um, I think you know, and, and, and I think <laughs> next year we might be saying the same things about drones and automatic cars because mm -hmm. uh, you, you like it feels like those technologies are where we were looking at the Google Glasses and watches a year ago. Like, it's a, ooh, this could be something. And then uh, in that loop, in, and maybe that's a little further out. I mean, everybody's saying it's further out, but maybe there's something that will come up in those uh, fields that will be, you know, a little more revolutionary and, and maybe speed up that process. Um, but, I mean, that seems like that's what the curve is doing right now. So Hey, guys, just chime in real quick. Uh, noticed a little too late. Sorry. Uh, apologies to Jim Loke. We did not... Uh, see this email uh, uh, during the course of the show this evening uh, when we're going about things. Uh, so I did want to make it sure it got into the show, so we're interjecting it uh, right here. So, uh, hey, Jim Loke, uh, uh, you know, again, up in Boston, joins us. Uh, he was busy, I believe, anchoring this evening, uh, so he couldn't attend the show. So uh, great to see he's doing great stuff up there. Uh, but he did send in his predictions. He wanted to be part of the show. Uh First of all, he said that RIM uh, releases the final incarnation of BlackBerry before selling its intellectual property to another company. I think he, I think he's one of those in the past few years has always been big on the death of RIM uh, and BlackBerry. Uh, Pittsburgh gets its first smart parking system where road sensors will alert drivers to open parking spots on city streets. I've heard about this, uh, and I don't know if it was, I don't think it was a Pittsburgh related thing, but I know our new mayor is really interested in these kind of statistical uh, uh, you know, using data for this kind of stuff. And I, I forget, there's somebody, I, I'm trying to remember who who, uh, who who actually did uh, come up with the system. I saw a demo of it uh, they were talking about. Uh, PayPal's new network of retailers that accept it as payment will be massively compromised, shutting it down. I know I've seen PayPal myself at Dollar General, General at all places. I, I've been tempted to try it, but never really want to bother with it. Like, do I have to really type in my, my password and, 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 and email address and that little stupid keypad? Uh, so I've been kind of curious about that. So there you go. Uh, Jim Loke uh, chiming in and back to the show that we're about to end probably. So I think we got everybody for predictions here. Uh, we got a bug out of here so the uh, guys can talk video games. Cynthia Klosky, tell people where they can find out more about the things you want them to find out about. Well, my company is Big Big Design, and I, I have been known to blog there. Uh, and I have a blog called My Brilliant Mistakes, mybrilliantmistakes.com. But where I'm living most of the time now is on Twitter. So you can find me on Twitter at CynthiaKlosky.com, and I'm imminently Googleable. So as long as you spell Cynthia Klosky roughly right, I think you'll find me. <laughs> uh, Frank Shinoeth, uh, I know you got, you got, you're on the Twitters. I don't know if you have anything else you want to plug out there. Uh, InsertCoinToBegin.com. Yes, where you do, if you're into cars and like like really into cars and car games, like Forza and Gran Turismo kind of stuff, this guy is the guy to do it. I don't understand his his posts, but I think they get the most hits. That's not a mass infected. Mass infected <coughs> so, um, so, so go check that. Insert coin to begin.com. His handle is Fuzzwad over there. Yep. Uh, and of course, on the couch, Mike Munns. You guys can find me at the Muns on Twitter or every Thursday night at Piper's, either way. <laughs> For an as is tradition. For as is tradition. Where I'm known as Zach Tanner's friend by some. Excellent. And Chilla? Hey, how's it going? Chill on the, on the Twitters. Um, you can find me over on DeviantArt as well with uh, Chilla Photo. Excellent. Of course, I'm over at Sorgatron.com. Um, at Sorgatron on uh, Twitter, MikeSorgatron.com if you want to link to every place else I'm at. I'm trying video blogs again. I'm trying it. We'll see how that goes. I just want YouTube content. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. content. I, I just need my YouTube. My personal YouTube just doesn't have anything. So if I just get on there and BS for two minutes every day, I feel like like I need to do that. 
you know, I, I don't know. And I'm still doing some blogs. I have some ideas for some, uh, the last two weeks I've been trying to get to it, but uh, we've been doing some cool stuff with Google Hangouts. How do you do a slideshow, multi-cam kind of thing mm -hmm. with two Google Hangouts in one room? Can you do an invite for, and I think I may have asked this before, can you invite the same person twice to a Google Hangout? Yes. we. Well, I know in our stuff we do on Mondays and Thursdays and everything, we definitely get like multiple, like I can log in on my computer as me and then also like on a tablet or phone as me. So you do get that multiple okay. thing and people mess with the multiple cameras moving around them and everything. So definitely you can do it. It gets a little wonky at that point too. Um, because Google's, there, there's always a problem with Google, there's a whole other thing, Google Hangout, like, kind of, and especially with the on-airs, where mm -hmm. it doesn't see the invites, or people don't go to the right place for the invites, and it doesn't pop up. It's not fluid. It's, yeah, it, it's not, like, like, if you send an invite, it will be everywhere, or it ends up too many places. Okay. Like, like, if you, like, like, Frank sent me a thing for, for a call, it, like, went through on here, didn't push through on my laptop notice, uh, but I definitely got a notification on my phone, and looks like here as well. No, and I did, did not get one on my Google device, so it's a little weird like that. Yeah, uh, Google needs to work on getting that to go through all at the same speed on thing. Yeah, but I mean, it's 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 as wonky as iMessage is in the same manner. The iMessage doesn't go everywhere all the mm -hmm. time. Um, <laughs> with that, guys, Awesome Cast is the last one of the year. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being with us with our, uh, our awesome chat room, live.sorgatronmedia.com. We'll be back beginning of January. You can join us here Tuesdays in 2014 at live.sorgatronmedia.com. We're about 6.30 p.m. Eastern. I think we're going to keep the same time. Uh, we're going to take a look at everything and see if we do want to change anything up with any of the shows. Like, got some ideas. Not about this show. I have no ideas about this show. This show... It's probably awesome. just continue. It's already awesome. <laughs> Thank you, our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome holiday.